In the lead up to Christmas 1992 in England, there was one toy so in demand but in such short supply that it nearly ruined Christmas for an entire generation of British youth. The Matchbox Thunderbirds Tracy Island playset was the hottest toy of the year, but with demand far outweighing supply, there were more than a few disappointed youngsters opening presents that Christmas. And what makes this all the more astounding is the fact that Tracy Island was the central location of a television program that was first broadcast all the way back in 1965. But thanks to the amazing generosity of Jody from the Gen X Toys Geek YouTube channel, we have in the studio an original vintage 1992 Matchbox Tracy Island playset. And in today's video, we're going to take a detailed look at this toy and tell you the story of how this playset almost ruined Christmas. Come with me, toy fans. This video is proudly brought to you by Valiverse, the creative company behind the most exciting new action figure range available on the market today, Action Force. Make sure you visit the Valiverse.com website to purchase your amazing Action Force comics, toys and other products, and follow Valiverse on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook to keep up to date with the latest product news. All the links are in the description below. Shop Valiverse, because it's time for action. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel where we're obsessed with bringing you the true history of vintage toys and action figures. By the early 1960s, English television producer Jerry Anderson had achieved great success with his Super Marination puppet shows, Supercar, Fireball XL5 and Stingray, but his most popular and commercially successful series was Thunderbirds, which was first aired on the ITV network in September of 1965. This classic British science fiction TV series is set in the year 2065 and follows the exploits of International Rescue, a life-saving organisation equipped with technologically advanced land, sea, air and space rescue craft. These craft are headed by a fleet of five vehicles named the Thunderbirds and are launched from the organisation's secret base of operations in the Pacific Ocean, Tracy Island. If you're an American watching this video and you're unfamiliar with either Jerry Anderson or the Thunderbirds, you get an understandable pass. But if you're a British pop culture enthusiast and you don't know who the Thunderbirds are, you should be ashamed of yourself, because this is one of the greatest TV exports to ever come out of the UK. The Thunderbirds TV show originally ran for two seasons, totaling 32 different 50 minute long episodes, and was so popular it was distributed to around 30 different countries, with the show only ending production after Jerry Anderson's financial backer failed in his bid to sell the program to an American television network. Through periodic reruns of the show, the Thunderbirds remained in the public consciousness, to the point where I had watched several episodes and was well aware of the program, and I was born in the late 1970s. During my childhood, the series was last transmitted on ITV in 1981, but the BBC was able to acquire the rights to the TV episodes and they began rerunning the Thunderbirds on BBC Two in September of 1991. This rerun averaged more than six million viewers per episode, prompting the network to repeat season one six times over the course of the following years. The Thunderbirds was a smash hit once again, largely due to the fact that the show's timeless concept appealed to a whole new generation of children, and the parents of that era also grew up watching the show and were thoroughly enjoying revisiting the Thunderbirds through adult eyes. The buzz surrounding this Thunderbirds renaissance was so intense that several companies wanted to obtain the toy merchandising rights, with the eventual winner being Matchbox, who launched a new toy range to coincide with the BBC Two repeats of the show. The demand was insane, and the Matchbox company's sales figures for Christmas 1992 even surpassed those attained by Star Wars merchandise sold in Britain in the late 70s and early 80s. Unfortunately though, Demand for the company's Tracy Island playset overwhelmed supply, leading to a substantial black market for the toy and parents fighting over the products in toy stores. Look at the turbo man! <laughs> hey everybody, these two are looking for a turbo man! Shut up, man! The creature that time forgot. No. Brains is in deadly danger. Launch Thunderbirds. Opening pool. Thunderbird 1, MVP. Launching Thunderbird 1. Opening hangar. Thunderbird 2, ready for launch. It's eating everything this path. Thunderbirds 1 and 2 to the rescue. 
in the nick of time. Monster captured. Mission accomplished. Thunderbirds Tracy Island playset with electronic sound from Matchbox. With such a rabid demand, you'd think this playset was quite complex or something, but Tracy Island is in fact fairly simple. The main island is represented here by a painted plastic shell, with the roundhouse and pool area being separate add-on constructions. The playset also includes voice and sound features, which are activated by four buttons located on the inside of the island and are accessible via an opening at the rear. Thunderbirds are go! The main drawback of this playset is that it was not sold with any of the Thunderbirds vehicles included. And a child really needed these die-cast toys to get the full Thunderbirds toy experience. These vehicles could be purchased separately on individual card backs, but the best way to acquire them was with Matchbox's rescue pack that included Thunderbirds 1 through 4 and Lady Penelope's FAB1. And thanks to another very generous donation from my friend Chris, host of the excellent YouTube channel Chasing 80s Toys, I also have the Thunderbirds Rescue Pack here in the studio. When you incorporate the die-cast vehicles with Tracy Island, you'll discover that they integrate perfectly, and the combined collection creates a wonderful play experience. Thunderbird 1 is a blue and silver hypersonic rocket plane with extending wings and is used for fast response and this vehicle is launched from beneath the swimming pool on Tracy Island. The pool slides back by turning the stairs and then... Thunderbird 1, FAB. Thunderbird 2 is a green supersonic cargo carrier that requires a launching ramp for takeoff. Firstly you open the hangar door of Tracy Island which automatically folds down the palm trees, and then Thunderbird 2 drives through the opening. Tilt up the launching ramp, open the blast shields, and Thunderbird 2 is clear for takeoff. Thunderbird 2, ready for launch. Next we have Thunderbird 3, a red single stage to orbit spacecraft, and this vehicle has its own secret launch compartment, concealed under the roundhouse. Thunderbird 3. Finally, we have Thunderbird 4, a small yellow utility submersible, which is typically carried inside the cargo bay of Thunderbird 2. In order to deploy Thunderbird 4, first Thunderbird 2 needs to be situated on its landing gear, which can be activated by two spring-loaded buttons. Then if you depress the small red button at the back of the cargo craft, you can lower the detachable pod. The front ramp of the pod is lowered, and then Thunderbird 4 can be launched. And just in case this submersible cannot make it back to the pod before danger arrives, it can be hidden in the cave on the side of the island. Although this toy is cool as hell, there are still hundreds of thousands of British children who didn't find this toy under the tree on Christmas morning 1992. So the long-running British children's television programme Blue Peter responded to the Tracy Island Christmas supply debacle. Using cardboard toilet rolls, aluminium foil and empty yoghurt pots, the Blue Peter team taught children and parents alike how to build their very own Tracy Island playset. And this episode of Blue Peter went on to become one of its most popular, with the BBC being overwhelmed by viewers' requests for copies of an instruction sheet for making the model. When the BBC relaunched the Thunderbirds again in the year 2000, this prompted a resurgence of interest in the Tracy Island playset. But history was destined to repeat itself, as demand for the new Soundtech Tracy Island playset once again outstrip supply. Demand for this new toy, now produced by Vivid Imaginations, was estimated at half a million units, but with only 60,000 models reaching toy stores before the Christmas of 2000, the Thunderbirds Tracy Island playset had its second crack at ruining Christmas. This time around, however, it wasn't just the demand causing the problems. It was also due to the new electronic sound tech features. Thunderbirds are go with new sound tech Tracy Island. Thunderbird 1, I'm on my way. I hope we're not too late, Father. Gee, this is a tough one. Looks like a job for Thunderbird 2. International rescue, we're on our way. Let's get down there. FAB, Virgil. Another great rescue for Thunderbirds. Sound tech Tracy Island. The electronic sound features incorporated into the toy were only possible due to the inclusion of a microchip, but in the early 2000s, these microchips were all being purchased by mobile phone manufacturing companies, leaving Tracy Island fans twisting in the wind. It seems whatever company attempts to manufacture a Tracy Island playset, they continually fail to meet customer demand. And although this toy may have come dangerously close to ruining two Christmases, for many, 
the Thunderbirds Tracy Island playset remains a highly desirable toy that has infamously cemented its place in the history of British toy production. So thank you all for watching, and if you thought this video was FAB, you can check out these videos where we review some other classic British toy lines. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you in the next video.